Morning all, good to be with you again. Uh, day two of our prayer week, which I think that makes it Tuesday. I think we've crept into June at some point in the last week. Not quite sure when, but, but I think it happened. Um, this morning we're thinking about testimony. And I want to share with you my testimony. Um, some of you may have heard uh, some of it or all of it in the past. Uh, but I want to share it with you just to encourage you about your testimony. And we'll come on, on to that. Um, uh, I've been in the Salvation Army all my life. I was uh, born uh, in Essex. Great place. Please keep off South End Beach. It's lovely, but don't go there at the moment. Um, I was born on a Salvation Army farm uh, down in Hadley, which was one of William Booth's visions uh, for his um, kind of colony training centres to send missionaries abroad uh, from his uh, book in Darkest England in the, at the end of the uh, 18th century. Sorry about that beep. Um, and uh, so I've been born on the Salvation Army farm, uh, brought up uh, in the Salvation Army, went to church, um, didn't really venture far away from church for a long time, did loads of Sally Army stuff <coughs> in one of those corps that, that had three meetings, beach meetings in the summer, open airs, busy church, lots going on uh, in different groups, um, youth leading, uh, all kinds of stuff that was going on. Uh, I was there a lot as well as played all sports and still it was pretty full on. So I've been around the Salvation Army a long time. Uh, I know a lot about it. Uh, when I was about um, 16, yeah, 16, just after my 16th birth, 15th birthday, so I was coming off for 16, uh, we went to uh, Portugal uh, with the Salvation Army band from Felixstowe. Shout out to Felixstowe. Uh, and this was a real turning point in my life. I'd always believed in God. I'd always sought to do uh, His will, work for the church. I'd always kind of believed that he was he was as true as anything else that I'd ever witnessed and experienced. Uh, but when we went on that um, on that kind of campaign over Easter uh, that year, um, God really spoke to me very directly. And it was in one of the most bizarre situations that, as a group of musicians and as a band, we'd gone over to support the local corps in San Brash in Portugal. So it was a good gig, to be honest. It was lush, <laughs> but. The most important thing I remember is on Good Friday, sitting in uh, the service and uh, the, the officer there was preaching in Portuguese. Now I struggle with English, as you know, so Portuguese, I had no hope, I only knew a few words. And actually, none of the band spoke Portuguese. But God spoke through that guy so powerfully that by the end of his sermon, for whatever reason, we, we all actually felt so convicted that God was there and we understood what this guy had said in our hearts, if not verbally in our, and in our minds. Uh, and that moment changed my life where I, I kind of knelt at the mercy seat in the life of the Salvation Army uh, and just said, right, I believe you, God, but now I want to serve you. I want to follow you. I want to do really what you want me to do in my life. And then <clears throat> we came back and, and everything changed and those were really fruitful years uh, in my life, in our church, uh, in stuff that was going on in, on the youth scene in and around the, the area of Anglia, across Norfolk and Suffolk particularly. Uh, and God was just doing amazing stuff in our lives and we were kind of seeking after him. Uh, and then at 19 I got called to be a Salvation Army officer uh, and then I've been serving as a Salvation Army officer since 2003 in different uh, different situations and different in different guises if you were that's my testimony very briefly i could go on and talk about all the stuff that god has done throughout that uh, and the disciples testimony too was really powerful the disciples stood up and spoke of their experience of jesus christ uh, and in verse 4 we read about what happened when these these people stood up. Now, yes, they'd seen Jesus, they'd been with Jesus, and so they understood who Jesus was and could portray and relate their own personal experience with him. And what does it say in verse 4? People responded. People came and gave of their lives. In the scripture yesterday we looked at, it said that when the people had heard Paul and John's, Peter and John's experience in the prison, 5,000 were added to their number. Whenever testimony is shared, 
people respond. More people at the moment are seeking after answers or reassurance and, and comfort at this time during the pandemic. They're, they're, they're looking for prayer and support and encouragement. Now, I like to think, uh, well, actually no, let me rephrase that. I know that as a minister and a preacher, most of the time it isn't my clever words or the way I phrase things or my my sermons or my personal reflections that convince people that God is real. Part of that isn't my job on a Sunday. My job is to help us be discipled into living life. What is powerful are your words and words of testimony where what we understand about God is lived out in who we are as people. No matter how good a preacher thinks he may be or a minister or a pastor, whatever you want to call them, how good they think their sermons may be, it is people's personal experience with others that really has an impact and changes lives and speaks of the God's, God's redemptive work in such a powerful way that people can't ignore it. In verse 20, just bear with us a moment while I get verse 20 up, thank you. Uh, when they're called, Peter and John uh, are challenged by... Uh, the, When Peter and John are talking about their faith um, to the judges, to the people, uh, uh. Peter and John's testimony standing before the Pharisees and the religious leader, they're talking about. Uh, their experience of God and there's this little verse in verse 20 this little phrase in verse 20 that says as for us we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard and I think this is that the heart of testimony we as for us we cannot we cannot stop just speaking about what God has done your testimony is what you have and it's a powerful thing it's unique to who you are and your experience of Jesus Christ. Please can I encourage you, do not worry if you do not think it matches up to the testimony of another. There are some amazing examples of the way that God breaks through miraculously. But I also believe that each and every testimony is an amazing example of the way God breaks through just how you need it. Tell it as it is. Allow God to update your testimony on a weekly basis and particularly over these last few moments. Share how God is at the heart of the peace and the comfort you have even in this time of crisis. See what happens. See what happens when you speak from your heart your own experience of God. Lockdown doesn't mean that we can keep or should keep quiet. Or that we have to retreat and just wait for our church doors to open again. But we need to be ready and willing to do things differently. So go for it. Talk about what you've seen God do in your life and your own experience. Be honest in your questions and doubts that you have in your faith. And be open to hear people's reaction back to that too. If you don't know the answer to their question... Say you don't know, but seek after the answer to that question from somebody else you trust and maybe use their testimony in a powerful way too. As for us, as a Newark Salvation Army, we can't stop speaking about who Jesus is. We can't stop sharing the good news of the gospel, wherever we may be, however we do that. Your testimony is your testimony. It is unique 
and powerful and it's the one that God has given you to tell others about him. May God bless you as you go sharing today.